All right. Uh, good morning. Um, we're going to get uh, started with our session um, about a network of critical action researchers in education. We're going to, in fact, share our research on the processes and realizations of our community. And um, we have uh, three of the five presenters uh, here today, including myself, and two whose contributions are um, shared via video clips. Before we go any further, Yisid, um, we want to um, acknowledge the historical brutality of Canadian resident, residential schools in light of the most recent findings of unmarked and doc, undocumented burial site at Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia. This was just recently uncovered and we want to share our deepest sympathies with our friends and Indigenous colleagues. Um, as Linda Mary Gunn says, there was an extensive pattern of genocide that was deliberately being instituted, not just through these organizations, but also on a daily basis through the Indian agents that were overseeing and administering all the reserves. You can see on the right an image of this school with the memorial plaque, which indeed recognizes um, the horrors of um, children being segregated and forcibly detained and the attempts at genocide um, that were affected. You see it? This is our traditional land acknowledgement uh, from the Toronto area. And um, today it seems a little empty to uh, read it in light of um, these horrific findings. Uh, but I do um, want to acknowledge that uh, we are on land um, that is not our own and we're grateful to be able to work on these lands. Um, it's important to understand that our community is an international community. And yes, it. Um, and that there are in fact um, lands throughout North and uh, South, Central and South America who, um, these lands have belonged to others, and it's important to understand that uh, many members of our NCARE community come from parts of the world where, in fact, there has been uh, a great deal of injustice and varying attempts at genocide of Indigenous people. Thank you. Um, we're going to, um, as I explained, um, run through a little bit of uh, what our community is about and which lenses we've used to um, understand um, the diversity in our community. We're going to share some of our individual trajectories and then um, we'll wrap up with um, a consideration of the factors that have contributed to building and sustaining um, our community of education inquiry. And hopefully throughout, we'll hear a little bit from you. Um, so to begin, um, if you're in this room, um, perhaps you can let us know. Um, Yesid is going to copy um, the code for you to enter into your browser. He'll put this in the chat room for you to be able to access. And um, if you can go there, um, that would be great. And um, enter um, your responses to the three questions. 
So you can either go to menti.com and enter your voting code, or you can simply enter the longer URL, copy it and paste it. Um, Yesid, would you mind stopping the sharing so that I can um, share my screen? Thank you. So take a moment to um, put in your responses. Oh, good. I see that um, two people have um, shown us how they are doing so far. I'm glad to see that um, we have <laughs> two people who are feeling great. One who is puzzled and questioning. <laughs> Anybody else can certainly um, enter um, how they're doing. I know depending on where you're joining us in the world, you may be uh, selecting option three. I know Srimali is joining us from the other side of the world where, what time is it, Srimali? It's uh, five to nine. Oh, not PM. too bad. No, no, not bad at all. Um, I'm wondering if all of us uh, might take a moment to enter um, three words that come to mind when you think about carrying out action research in your own context. I know that it's just a small group, so um, perhaps everybody present can take a moment to do that. Interesting. Um, the notion of collaboration certainly is um, a strong one, that of connection, um, intersections, engagement, love, process, research. When the words are larger, those words are coming back more frequently and collaboration is at um, the center. Um, what's exciting is to see um, mainly uh, positive um, words. And I see also coordination as being um, one of the words. And certainly I think any type of research can be quite intensive when it does come to actually operationalizing it and making it happen, especially if it's critical and participatory, it can be even more challenging. Now, um, I'm going to um, see, have we got some new words? Care, the word critical, teachers and students. So thank you for entering these. Um, I'm going to um, try to move to the next slide. Um, which of these gifts best represents how you feel when you have the opportunity to talk about your um, action research or action research with colleagues? Um, we have one person who has... Uh, It seems that we have lost Antoinette for a second, but she's coming back soon, right? Just Antoinette have is muted. Yes. Antoinette. I'm, I'm, I'm here? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we have one person who's feeling really great about this. I guess three people are feeling great about it. And um, perhaps as you uh, figure out your way to Menti, you can add uh, your particular feeling. So, so far, very positive. Um, 
And I'm going to uh, go over to you uh, now, um, Yesid, to begin sharing again. Is the right slide, Antoinette? Yep, you go yep. ahead. All right, so uh, today we'll be talking about our network, or some other people may call it a community of practice or professional practice. So we are Anchor. And uh, Anchor is the network of critical action researchers in education. As you know, and we'll know through our presentation, we are Anchor because we care. And also we <laughs> began at the University of Toronto, OIC, in the Department of Curriculum, Teaching and Learning. So our community has grown and includes teachers, educators, administrators, graduate students, and researchers involved in different forms of practitioner inquiry, teacher research, reflective inquiry, and other types of action research as well. So as you will know through our presentation today, our network is international with members from different parts of the world, such as Canada, Chile, Colombia, sometimes Ecuador, Finland, Mexico, Norway, Scotland, Tanzania, the United States, Sri Lanka here with Sri Mali, and many other folks around the world as well. Um, well one of the things that is important for us to understand about that is our our outlet. So how do we go about our network? And our the way to know about our network is to go to our website, which I uh, maybe either Srimali or Anton, I may put the, the website link on the chat box while I go about it uh, and show you a little bit of what you will see on the website. So in this screen, you can see uh, what we really want is to promote discussions, to share resources and collaborative uh, forms of uh, teaching and doing research with educators, teachers, and administrations from all over the world, as, as I said, um, who share the belief, we all share the belief that actual research can definitely contribute to improving the quality of learning experiences and outcomes for students. So who we are all teachers, educators, we, we want to uh, talk about all of these related to uh, actual research. And like I said before, we are all around the world, right? And you can also, when you go on our website, you will see uh, on the top above here, uh, the different uh, uh, activities that you can navigate in our website. So in our website, you can also find the different research projects our members have been working for a while as they're interested in action research, but other forms of research as well. Uh, here we can see one example uh, of a new research in collaboration with faculty professor at the, the, oh, I didn't put it there. I had one, but I didn't put it. So we had a collaboration, but I don't have it here. Sorry about that. So, oh, this is the one, sorry. I just, the collaborate, never mind. I was just thinking that he can see one of the examples of Amir's research in collaboration with a faculty professor at the University of Toronto in which they discuss how students' identities are being recognized and online courses at the university. So feel free to explore uh, our website uh, for more of this type of research as well. We also have this section that is called learning modules, as you can see here on the upper uh, right part. Um, and in these modules, anyone can have access to different lessons would anyone is interested in learning more about our rapture research we have organized this in different sections for example in module one we have sections on exploring applying and considering action research as a methodology for your context and if you happen to know spanish there is also a spanish uh, uh, version of these modules as well Additionally, last but not least, uh, we also have a resource section in which you can find journal articles, books, and book chapters, as well as, well as instructional videos uh, that may help teachers and researchers to dig deep into the concepts of action research. So we, we invite everybody to explore and use these resources whenever you have the time. All right. Um... 
We've used intersectionality as a lens to understand our diversity as a community. Um, this is an increasingly, um, I guess, popular way to understand the world in which we live, in which we operate as learners, teachers, researchers. Um, so as you listen to our um, trajectories as presenters and members of NCARE, think back to um, the intersectionality framework, which, which helps us to see that each of us has um, unique identity markers and also unique experiences negotiating um, different forms of discrimination and living with the, within the larger forces of society. I'll begin with uh, sharing my trajectory um, into NCARE. Um, you'll see at the top um, left, um, my home for the last 32 years has been the University of Toronto and OISE in particular. Um, this is where I've had the privilege to work with um, both um, undergraduate and graduate um, students in the field, interested in the field of education. And um, about um, a dozen years ago, um, I had the opportunity to host colleagues. Well, it looks that we have lost again, Antoinette, for a moment. But in the meantime, we're going to have a look really quick at her um, slide over here. As you can see, she was saying that she has had lots of experience in teacher, teacher education. And I'm, uh, I'm back. She's, she's back. She's back. <laughs> yeah. So um, at the University of Playa Ancha in Chile, um, I've worked with a number of colleagues. And this is really where our um, NCARE uh, community started to grow. And um, I've been afforded uh, many opportunities over the years to collaborate on different types of action research, um, some more collaborative, as in the example given um, on the left at the bottom from the Diversity in Teaching website, where I collaborated with um, high school students and um, a high school teacher. I also had uh, many opportunities to do uh, different forms of self-study, which uh, are just represented with two um, articles that have come from these studies. In the middle and the most important is what NCARE has allowed me to um, experience and do. It's a fact um, allowed me as a community to become more critical. It has really stretched me. It's broadened my perspectives. It's motivated me to continue to innovate. And um, it's provided um, a community of potential collaborators. All right. So it looks like, I wonder if that's everything that Antonella wanted to say, or we should move to the next person. Antoinette, move are you there? To the next slide. Okay. Please move on. All right, so now we're going to hear from one of our colleagues, Amir Kalan. Hello, uh, my name is Amir Kalan. I'm an assistant professor at McGill University. I'm very much interested in studying the sociocultural and power dimensional aspects of literacy engagement. Uh, particularly, I'm interested in um, the experiences of minoritized populations with literacy, uh, because those include um, a lot of power relational aspects, uh, well, because of the language difference or because of the racial and ethnic difference. Uh, uh, and I believe that those relations uh, impact the process of teaching and learning immensely. I joined the ENCA community um, almost uh, six years ago when I was a PhD student at the University of Toronto. Um, I, I really liked the community and I wanted to be part of the community because it wasn't directly connected to my own research, my own institutional research as a PhD student. What really attracted me to the network was 
uh, this underground and independent nature, uh, the network wasn't funded by, by any institution or any grant. Everybody attended the sessions voluntarily. Uh, and um, because of my interest in power relations, I believe that that's a very interesting venue because uh, funding and institutional hierarchies are not determining the activities of the ENCA community. At the same time, uh, the ENCA uh, just connected with a, with a range of fantastic educators all over the world. And I saw that as a great opportunity. Uh, we had a great community of international graduate students at the University of Toronto, but the ENCA uh, created this possibility to reach out to, to educators in their own contexts. Uh, and, I, and I loved that opportunity and I, um, and I joined the ENCA community. Hello, uh, my name Now over to Shumali. Um, so as Antoinette mentioned, I'm joining you all from Sri Lanka, Colombo. Uh, I joined, I'm actually uh, teaching at the Open University of Sri Lanka. So on the left-hand side, that's what you see, the top left-hand side. I joined the NCAT community about six or seven years ago when I was a doctoral student. Uh, and what actually, what attracted me to the community was the flexibility that it enabled me. Uh, the flexibility to join in, come out, be more involved, be less involved. Uh, and I was actually weaved in uh, the NCAR around my various other tasks that other engagements that were part of my life. But now, uh, now that I'm actually a professor in a Sri Lankan university, I actually have more time. So I'm much more invested than I was when I was a, a graduate student. And what you could see, uh, the three pictures on the top uh, from three uh, action research projects that I've been involved in over the last 10 years or so. Uh, so some of them were critical action research projects. One was a theater project. Another one was an identity project. And the one on the right hand side was actually a community uh, engagement project. And overall, I could I sense how critical action research being part of NCARE has actually shaped who I am, uh, my teaching, my supervision, the curriculum development I work. And, and I also realize I have a, a supportive community of action researchers. I mean, even this presentation is a result of that. Um, so that's my trajectory. Thank you, Shumali. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Colombia in South America. You see the map of Colombia around here. And, uh, and now I am a Canadian citizen. So I have spent the last 20 plus years in North America where I have treasured many friendships from international contexts. And uh, being a member of Anchor extended my network of academic colleagues, of researchers, educators, and connections with other uh, people from the community as well. So I came to this group a bit more than six years ago when I was finishing my master's. And uh, as I was interested in connecting more with research community at the university who was doing action research, obviously it was naturally for me to join the group. Um, at that time I started a, a action research project uh, participating in a collaborative action research uh, with an English teacher in Colombia at the time on the project about peace education in English language teaching. So in care uh, for me has been very important because I have noticed the immense support, not only academically, but also emotionally. I have not only found colleagues, but also friends along the way. And in this uh, photograph that you can see here is one of the presentations that some of the members of Anchor did uh, in Colombia in a conference in Cartagena. So we uh, were, uh, lucky enough to travel all together, the four of us, all of us are Colombian, but we also belong to the Anchor community, and we were able to present all of our uh, action research projects in Colombia. So now we're going to listen a video from one of our members, uh, Claudio Jaramillo. Uh, 
Okay, um, my name is uh, Claudio Jaramillo. I am an EFL teacher and currently a third year PhD student at OISI at the University of Toronto. And I came to NCARE as a research assistant to Antoinette, the NCARE convener. And since then, I've been part of this network. So from the onset of my doctoral studies, I have been part of this diverse group of educators from multiple parts of the world, which inspired and grounded many of the ideas that, that I am currently applying in my uh, own research context. My current uh, critical action research projects are placed on two tracks. One of them, uh, my doctoral project, has to do with the English language education hidden curriculum in a middle class secondary school embedded in the agitated waves of COVID restrictions and the sociopolitical unrest in Chile. In this project, I am co-teaching and supporting an English teacher with his five grade 12 groups in a remote educational modality. And the second project directly connects with this presentation, which has to do with how networks are born and begin to grow across time. I am also initiating a, a project with, with five young teachers working in, in challenging socioeconomic conditions. So drawing on the anchor members' experience and experiences in, in plural has definitely triggered many insights and, and in, in integrating perspectives to understand and approach educational communities' growth and cooperation as a way to enhance more robust um, and situated educational practices. So in this respect, NCARE has functioned as a point of encounter whereby the various members come to share and cross-fertilize uh, our projects, perspectives, and, and ideas. So in fact, part of my participation as a research assistant has been to explore the network evolution. So I traced the evolution of the members who have been and still are part of the active group. This slide uh, shows how each of the members has moved across time and how others have joined the journey throughout the network evolution. We can see the blue blurry dots uh, in, in the middle uh, arrow as moments in which projects have been uh, happening and also have been a, a, a great boost of uh, for incorporating new members and as, a, and as a space to share individual and collective initiatives. So as you can see, as the group has evolved across time, these initiatives gradually become less evident since the group has achieved some sort of um, collective maturity with a stronger focus on conversational exchanges, sharing perspectives and experiences and, and subsequently showing the consolidation of an enriching space for sharing and envisioning a less a uh, neoliberal world uh, together. All right, thank you so much for Claudio who sent us his video about his uh, interest in Anchor. Now we are quickly moving into our framework of reference. Antoinette, over to you. All right. Um, we uh, used this uh, comprehensive framework of research community development factors developed by Cassidy and colleagues in 2008 to guide us in understanding what was actually uh, making our community work. So you can see um, there are seven main factors moving from uh, the nature of the dialogue and participation to relationships, the types of perspectives and assumptions shared by community members or not, <laughs> the structure and context, the purpose, the climate, and um, 
who is in charge and controls. So next you'll hear from different community members um, regarding their perspectives on how um, NCARE um, actually, if you wish, has lived these different factors. So to begin, um, we're going to hear from um, Amir, who uh, also um, was able to record um, a short clip for us. Why is sustaining communities of education in climate? Why is sustaining communities of education in climate significant? Most of our current structures are one industrial. Uh, they have very sophisticated um, structures, uh, managerial structures uh, that dehumanize uh, the relationships of the staff and, and educators and teachers. And second, they are profit oriented. So um, the reality is that human human relationships uh, and, um, and and even uh, research uh, generating knowledge is not necessarily the first priority. So in, in such a scene, uh, teachers are usually get really alienated. Um, and teachers at, at most of the time feel lonely, particularly if they want to engage with research and if they want to see themselves as, as researchers. So in such a scene, uh, educators, educators need to come together in communities of inquiry uh, and they need to fight back against the alienation of the system. In uh, most uh, orthodox research methodologies actually contribute to this sense of alienation because they are based on a particular hierarchies with the academic researchers at the top and teachers at the bottom, and they follow particular research methods and paradigms that are already formulated. So engaging with alternative forms of um, uh, practitioner inquiry, uh, such as uh, critical action research, creates this freedom for these communities uh, to be together, uh, to be creative, uh, and, and, and have a, a sense of um, liberation um, um, and, and, and not feel pressured by current educational structures. Um, next, Amir is also um, commenting on um, Yesid. Dialogue and participation. That's right. In order to sustain um, a teacher inquiry community, you need dialogue and participation. This could, of course, happen through uh, regular but voluntary meetings. For instance, uh, with the Anchor community, we met more or less once every month. Uh, however, uh, um, another way to sustain this dialogue between the members is mobilizing different projects that uh, the members can engage with. Uh, these projects might include uh, um, just uh, traditional, for instance, conference presentations, uh, um, or uh, kind of more artistic endeavors like creating movies or creating art galleries. Uh, one of the projects that we engaged with in the Anka community was a publication project. So we decided that uh, just inviting people to uh, contribute articles uh, for a big collection of autoethnographies and dual ethnographies uh, could be a great catalyst uh, to connect the members uh, with one another and um, to create a kind of a stronger intellectual and human bonds uh, uh, between the members. That's why we decided, for instance, uh, not to engage with the traditional blind review processes. Instead, uh, we were very, very uh, uh, conscious and we were selective when it came to uh, our, our editorial process. So we connected people uh, to each other um, um, as, as reviewers and as, um, um, as peers who could provide feedback, who had particular relationships with another or could re enrich uh, uh, each other's projects. So writing became a catalyst in, uh, in, in, our, in our community. So we didn't write just for the sake of writing to publish. But writing was only uh, an excuse to get together and discuss the projects. 
definitely. Now we're moving into the next part of our elements on the framework. Um, as you can see, some of these uh, connections uh, or elements from the framework are connected. And following up on what uh, Amir was saying, we're talking about the perspectives and the assumptions. And the concept of these perspectives and assumptions allow me and our members to understand that the diversity of perspective among community members shapes the nature of interactions and the way the network operates and changes over time. So um, I have seen this collective project as an opportunity to grow professionally and learn a little bit more about others uh, and how we also have faced different challenges uh, when, we, when it comes to research across different diverse contexts. Uh, one of the greatest benefits of Anchor for me and, I, and for most of the members as well has been its members. We are coming from diverse con contexts, different places, and which are different cultural backgrounds that enrich the network itself. And with some of them, I still continue to collaborate beyond our regular network meetings. It is a process of continuous learning from them, their experiences and the support I have been given at numerous times has been uh, excellent. I have attended every meeting and never ceased to be impressed by the power of multiple perspectives uh, for the creation of new understanding and new knowledges. Anchor has always welcomed the diversity of its members, perspectives and backgrounds which enrich and continue reaching our conversation and ways of thinking about criticality, especially in action research as we transform uh, different types of research paradigms. So in other words, assumptions about what it means to be with a group of colleagues, uh, researchers and educators has not only helped me to transform my own conceptions and perspectives of how I see the world, but also I have seen how it has helped the group itself to transform as well. Over to you, Srimali. What's your perspective? Okay, so I'm going to speak about relationships. I think at the heart of any community are relationships, and it's the strong bonds that are forged and developed over time that helps communities, any community, to strengthen themselves. And the relationships within the community, what I've seen even with NCARE is influenced by cultural perspectives and the various intersecting identities. And Antoinette spoke about it when she spoke about the um, intersectionality, when she spoke about the intersectionality wheel, where it's the intersecting identities of the different participants that shape these relationships. And as a member of this, a very, very long standing member of this community, some of the key factors I feel that have strengthened our relationship. One is time. So these bonds that we forged is something that has evolved over many years and we've grown. I started as a graduate student um, and then I'm at a very different point now. And also our participants commitment to the community. We are all com committed, nobody's coerced into it. It's a very fluid community. There's also through dialogue and exchange of ideas. And I think Yasid spoke about it, how the wealth of knowledge that is shared in this community, it, it, it never fails to impress us uh, what each community member brings in. And, and with that, what the next thing that I've seen is also that it's a very safe place. For example, the, in the publication that Amir mentioned, it's a collection of auto duo and duo ethnographies. That's, I think, a form of writing where the authors in a way makes themselves very vulnerable and open up about them, themselves, their work, uh, their weaknesses. So in order for me, uh, maybe it's also a cultural factor, but for me to open up and write, it's this safe space that allows me to actually talk and write about my experiences and my challenges. So that is, it has provided a very safe place. And also relationships are based on a lot of mutual trust. Amir spoke about the critical friends and the relationships that we maintain when we actually uh, carried our publication. And also 
especially in a time like this. Earlier, when I actually joined this community, there were some of us who joined met at OISI and very few joining online. But with time, the mediating tool that sustains this relationship is actually uh, technology. And also our strong relationships have ensured the creation of new knowledge. Uh, that's our publication, joint activities, such as all these research work, public uh, uh, conferences that we do. Uh, and also this has evolved the strengthening of re relationships has also strengthened the criticality in which we engage. Uh, finally, one thing in connecting this to Cassidy's article, one thing they say is that um, a crucial aspect of maintaining relationships is that of a, a strong facilitator and uh, uh, the team of participants. So, and, and what they say, Socrates metaphor, what they say is uh, uh, the facilitator's role is similar to that of a midwife, somebody who helps to give birth. So Antoinette, that's you and the rest of us are the participants that actually work together in this envi environment. And moving on, another important aspect of a community is the climate. And uh, this climate actually, I think my earlier point actually spoke towards about this, a climate emerges from the various group dynamics and the interactions that we maintain. And it's, it's that climate that has helped us to be safe, be motivated, be invested in this, in this community. And it's also, the climate is also sustained through a set of un written rules that are based on mutual trust, uh, where uh, we respect each other, help us each other to grow, help each other to stretch uh, and challenge each other. And also the, it, it's a climate where in which conflict or positive conflict actually helps us to strengthen ourselves. Yeah, definitely. I would like to follow up really quickly with a couple of comments on what Shrimali has just said. And um, for um, for those who are here today with us, the nature of our regular meeting reveals a very positive climate, right? Where all the members in this network are very comfortable talking about uh, uh, all of our action research projects because we are clear about what the purpose is and uh, in which we are working to push against neoliberalism in our respective communities while attempting to improve the learning opportunities of those marginalized communities. So uh, you can see a climate of support, care, and why not love? So now speaking about uh, the idea of control, so the concept of control, which explains that the locus of power in terms of granting access to the community and its resources shape the culture and dynamics of this network. So the nature of our interactions lies at the center of support, trust, and knowledge building. Our network is a rich research hive in which all the members share a common goal to do critical research that responds to the needs of each one of their communities. So we are also diverse in nature and yet we are interconnected by different social categorizations such as race, class, gender, and other markers that makes us unique. And for example, a key ingredient in the network comes from the members genuinely engagement with projects where social justice is at its core. Although we are very diverse in terms of our landscapes and practice, as well as our multiple personal and professional identities, we have always felt safe sharing and supporting each other's projects rather than one person manipulating the conversations and controlling all the things that are done at the, um, at the core of the, of the network. And I guess next um, we'll hear again from uh, Claudio speaking to structure and context yeah, or definitely. commenting on control first. So building on my colleagues points, I believe the group is not interested in arresting power, but challenging power. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I have seen all these years that folks in the group are genuinely engaging with each other in listening to our ideas, in receiving contributions and expanding perspectives. And so power tensions are, are actually dissipated with these practices in my view. Um, according to Michel Foucault and even Paulo Freire, power itself is, is defined as the negotiation of relationships from this angle, the, the sheer sharing of opportunities in this network challenges the idea of power in its most uh, profound form. And drawing on Cassidy's framework, uh, structure and context component, and also building on my colleagues' uh, descriptions of this framework, the role of structure and context is particularly relevant for this networking in, in multiple ways. In, in my own work exploring the network, I have seen at least four key structuring features. The first one is the organization of time, uh, considering the multiple time zones, uh, since this is an international network, as I mentioned earlier in the slide of the evolution of the network, the group operates on the basis of regular monthly meetings where we update each other on our projects. And in this sense, the NCARE network is more organic in that it invites members who can attend because this, this also involves an, an investment of time. However, the group has been remarkably consistent over time uh, in, in its participation and attendance. The second uh, component is the communication tools implemented. So the network has integrated various platforms such as Skype or Zoom to connect with international members and even before the pandemic, allowing the recording of the sessions so that they are later on accessed by those members who are not able to attend. Uh, so these digital tools have also facilitated the members um, that, that members are not left uh, behind, and especially the newest members who can take a look at the historical archive of, of, of videos for them to inc incorporate in the uh, in the network more you know smoothly. Then another uh, component, speaking about like, like the the mechanisms of uh, of um, dissemination, uh, the, the, the video archive in this case, uh, a resource spot is also a form of structure in, in that emergent topics generally generate and populate our database with related paper, studies, and other valuable documents open to the community. So this practice also structures the discussions and helps to align some, some of the conversations and, and finally, another structuring component is the, the leadership in, in the hands of the convener that plays a crucial role in sustaining the continuity of the network, uh, the flow and schedule structures of the meetings, and so facilitating the, the, the communication within the, the group. All right. Um... This, um, I think, helps to see not only the evolution of NCARE, but how the different factors that have um, supported its development and maintenance have also evolved. So you can see back to the beginning in 2014, um, where we began our journey um, with professors interested in action research in higher education. And um, this evolved into a focus on individual critical action research pro projects, which different members of the community brought forward. Um, by the time we reached uh, 2017, 
we were very aware of the affordances and constraints of conducting uh, critical action research across our contexts, and there was a lot of discussion about uh, the devaluation of the type of research that we were doing. Um, and uh, this meant um, how it was impacting how others viewed us and also our um, promotions and other forms of recognition. Um, we moved into um, a focus on more collaborative inquiry projects. Um, and from that, over the past three years, have flowed a number of different kinds of discussions. In 2019, what characterized our discussions was often um, alternative types of methodologies that we might um, enact as part of our research. Uh, in 2020, um, the first year of the pandemic with so many uh, movements uh, growing and protesting around the world, we really started to uh, think about um, global issues and their impact on our work. And um, our critical conversations related to um, decolonizing our work and related to, um, I guess, all uh, types of um, social justice across our different contexts have continued. In the uh, colored lines below, um, you can see, for example, that consistently the uh, light mauve has been um, there with uh, open dialogue and participation. The relationships piece has, uh, or element has changed over time. Um, so, this is just visual food for thought. You can see that there has been not only evolution in our focus, but in some of our processes. If you'd like to move to the next slide. Um, we're happy to uh, wrap up by sharing um, about our publication mentioned by a couple of our presenters, which will uh, be appearing soon uh, from Peter Lang Publishers. The title of the publication is Critical Action Research, Challenging Neoliberal Language and Literacies Education, Auto and Duo Ethnographies of Global Experiences. And the artwork, um, which shows the beautiful green leaves, which is, I think, our community growth, uh, but with roots that are uh, sometimes being smothered or um, not sufficiently fed by um, existing in extremely neoliberal contexts. And to um, complete, uh, we have provided a link in the chat room, um, which I'll just, um, do now um, so that if you have a moment uh, now or later to um, go to our Jamboard and I'll just share uh, my screen um, Yesid, to um, show the Jamboard and how it works. Um, you don't have to, I, I think Yesid, um, I'm still seeing your screen. You have to stop sharing. Okay, thank you. Um, so if anybody wants to take a moment, um, um, are you seeing my, um, my screen? Yep. All right. Um, you can tell us a little bit about yourself. It's a pretty simple approach. You just uh, drag a sticky note write and um, save. In this case, I'll just cancel it. Um, and again, um, if you have any comments, uh, insights or experiences about your own involvement in um, networks um, of inquiry, you can definitely share them here. 
And finally, um, if you have any um, reflections or takeaways, um, you can place them um, here. Um, at this point, um, does any do any of the presenters have anything they'd like to add? Because we're our time is nearly up. Yep, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good too. Thank you. Um, so we will um, check back to the uh, Jamboard in case anybody um, actually connects. Uh, with the video recorded session, but we would love if you can share um, the final slide. Um, if you think you'd be interested in um, joining us, uh, we would love to um, embrace you and bring you into this community. As you heard, um, we are um, very motivated um, and very supportive. Um, and we recognize how the diversity of our membership um, really is uh, what uh, brings us back uh, every month to our community meetings. So you can reach out to any of those of us you met today uh, during this session. And we'd uh, be happy to provide information about how to join um, the network. Uh, thank you very much. And um, I wish you a wonderful remaining few days at the conference. Bye-bye. <laughs>